Okay. All right. Um, okay. So today's um, tutorial, which was supposed to be yesterday actually, uh, is about topic. We're going to be discussing topic modeling, sentiment analysis, and like uh, if time permits, also we'll pass by time series analysis. Um, here, like we are going to be covering the basics uh, and some kind of explanation of how these things work but it's not we're going to be completely comprehensive. It's just like, let's say I start. So something with topic modeling, it's um, topic modeling is uh, basically, it's a basic it's a statistical modeling where it uh, uses an unsupervised machine learning to analyze and cluster um, like it, it's finding in a corpora of documents or corpora of text, it's finding underlying topics by clustering similar words um, in appearing in this cor corpus. So, um, what is it useful for? Like, uh, um, it can be like for document clustering, uh, organizing, organizing like large. Uh, blocks of textual data, uh, getting information from un 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 unstructured text, and feature selection also when you are you want to run like maybe um, text classification, you can um, like reduce the number of features basically by using topic modeling first before you going um, to the next step. Okay, so how does it work? Like, and uh, to, to see how does it work, we're just going to look at one method or one, one kind of uh, model, which is the latent semantic analysis. So um, uh, the idea here is that you're changing all of your, the documents into a uh, um, bag of words. So like, um, you're not looking, so in this, uh, in this, and. Uh, uh, in this analysis, you are not looking at the structure of the text as as it appears. So uh, the text usually is comes in sentences, and the order of words matters. But here, you just like uh, change them, your text into just a bag of words. So uh, treating it like you just counting how much, uh, how many times each word appears, uh, and you can basically uh, create. Um, um, a matrix from that. So you say your data has documents, the like one, two, three, and four, and you count each term, how much, how many times it appears in each document, basically. So this is the first step. The second step is that you are assigning topics, meaning that you are assuming, um, sorry, you're assuming that like uh, each document is created as uh, like um, from like, uh, like let's say let's think about it like uh, each document is like let's say discussing um, a few topics and each topic creates like uh, like words come from from topics um, so each word in the document is coming from a particular topic there so here it looks like a matrix um, dimension reduction basically so instead here again so this is uh, what we got from the bag of words here counting the um, the term document matrix you are reducing the the dimension by like uh, instead of documents you have topics few topics and then uh, each topic like uh, is contributing to the document so basically here in this case like in, let's see this is the case we are taking the, uh, looking at we have four documents and say like a um, hundred terms here. You can say like, yeah, like there are only two topics and like uh, each topic, each term will appear with a particular probability in, in for, for, each top, for each topic. And then each topic is appearing with a particular probability in each document. So we're basically, instead of having four documents, we have two topics that what's like, what we are getting from this 
um, topic modeling. So to look at this in uh, uh, okay, so to look at it in um, in practice, so just to help you understand how it works, maybe you can look at an example. Sorry, this is not. Um, okay, this, uh, all right, so, okay, uh, so, uh, let me just comment on this before I go on. You can ask a question at any point, and if you're lost, just stop me. Um, so, let's see. So, say my, I have five documents here. Right, I'm defining them. The first document is talking about like uh, hoping 96% of water on Earth is in our oceans, covering 71% of the surface of the planet. Blah blah blah. It's about is talking about water, uh, how like water on the planet. I have a second um, document that is talk uh, talking about how much people sleep in their life. The third one is like uh, how much water per like um, I don't know if you can see this. I'm just like uh, reading this. So these are just um, a paragraph. Each document is like just made of a paragraph talking about something. So the third document is um, talking about how much water is in the in human bodies. How much it, it consists. Then. Um, uh, fourth document is talking about uh, how much students sleep, um, or like, or really. And um, so, no, it's actually one student who went without two, 264 hours without sleep and then won first place in some science fair. Um, the, third, the, the last one is talking about uh, water that comes in three states. So. Okay, okay, so you can see like uh, these are different documents that are just documents, just meaning there's uh, some text, right? And so I'm creating the corpus from these five documents here. So what I would do is, as I told you, that we're going to change the the okay. Let me can run this. Um, um okay in the um, what i'm using here i'm using the nltk um library which is um um uh, i don't know it's a natural language um library basically and um so what i'm trying to do is i'm trying to like create uh like um from this corpus, I'm going to create uh, uh, like from each document. It's going to be a bag of words, as I told you. Like so, each each for each document it will count the number how ma how many times each word appears in the document. And um, what I'm doing here is a pre-processing. I'm re removing like um, some words that are like filler words and um, a punctuation as well, because like in this, like each uh, commas, uh, uh, periods and stuff, I'm going to remove all of those. And then uh, basically also we'll do some kind of um, normalization of the words as well. So words like, uh, for example, programmers, programming and um, programs can be reduced to like their, um, their root basically, which is program instead. So again, reducing the number of words that appear, so the forms that they have, just to make the, the analysis uh, better, okay, or the modeling better. And um, okay, so this is, uh, as you can see, like um, I'm changing each each document into like a list of words that appear here basically cleaning removing the punctuation and any list of word um the this is the, the this uh, the all the steps before those these are just pre-processing 
So when it comes to the actual topic modeling, I'm going to be using here in this case, I'm going to be using um, Enzyme, I think uh, that it's um, again, it's a Python library where you have like different topic model, um, topic modeling models. One of them is the LSA I just talked about, the one that we talked about before. So uh, creating the, um, the doc term matrix, the one I explained, this one here, this one, term document matrix, which appears for each document, how many, like the like terms, how much, how many times they appear, this is what, happen, what appears here in this. So, like uh, creating a dictionary, this will be like the the terms that appear in the documents. And um, so the dictionary is the terms that appear in all the documents, right? Um, sorry, to how to can I see? It's um, and. Um, Not have all right so um okay the document uh, term matrix uh will be like um for example if i take the index zero this will be the first document and what i'm seeing here which is like the, okay, printed Oops. All right, so here you can see uh, tuples bit zero, one, one, one. So what is what is happening here? This is like each term is indexed by a number. So I have, for example, in my whole corpus, after cleaning it, I ended up with um, 24 terms. So I have indexes from, from zero to 23. And what is showing here is like how many times each term appears. So zero one, that means the word or the term zero appears one time in this document. The term one appears one time, the terms two appears one time. And you can see like some terms appear um, like multiple times, for example, uh, 20 and uh, 15, 14 appears three times and so on. Um, just looking at maybe a different one. This one, let me see. Okay. Um, so um, anyone that doesn't appear is, uh, is, is a zero. Um, in 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 uh, so that's why like i have uh here like i'm 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 getting higher numbers and also like i i don't see any zeros that the zero is not included but anything that doesn't appear is a zero so um okay so this is like the first step here this is this one i got on this matrix then I will have to run the model actually to, to reduce or to get the topics I want. So to do that, like, um, so in this case, we have to, diff to, to like choose, this is a choice, how many topics we want to have, uh, or we want our model to run. Um, and um, like what dictionary is using, so I'm passing here the term matrix, the dictionary, and the number of topics I want. So I'm choosing three. And once I run this, um, you I will get topics and like how many times, like, um, um, okay. So what you see here is that like, uh, okay, once I run this, this definitely. So I chose three three topics, right? It will take some time to run, and then I can see the result. 
uh, of my of my analysis so of my the topic modeling so i was supposed to be like getting um three topics like i'm clustering my like uh, let's say my text is written to three topics and I will see like um, if I print the topics I will get like the contribution of each term how much it, it contributes to the topic so let me like uh, to stand here and see what happens I will see and you can see like um, Okay, so it's not printed in a nice way, but like, okay, this is the first topic, and you can see like it uh, gets contribution from terms like water, percent, planet, train, get, given. So this is what is like, and you can see each one is weighted with some weight, right? Um, I will have another. So it's a little complicated word. I'm choosing so many words, but let me just choose three as before and before can like differentiate between the the different topics in a sense uh yeah the question uh the thing i wanted to know is that is there a difference between a topic in the keyword okay we'll get to that in a sense in a bit yeah so topic modeling and keyword distraction are two different things so, okay, so I just wanted to show you the topics I get and just like uh, to understand, I can get a feel because I wanted, I choose lots of words just to represent each topic with how many words, that's what I'm choosing here. And um, you can see that, so the first topic is uh, like, has contribution from water, percent and planet. The second one is getting sleeping, hour and still, and the third one like uh, water planet and rain so okay maybe three topics is not the, is the best but like you can see like this is uh representing something about water on the planet and this is about like hours of sleep um it's a topic about that so i don't get a level for the topic but i'm getting a cluster basically um yeah so this is like one way to do this um Topic modeling this one, uh, one, one, one kinds of model. Another kind of model which works kind of similar. It's called um, 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 latent uh, electric allocation, which again works in a in a similar way. But how it works, it more of uh, the analysis itself is going to be through. Uh, probabilities so it's counting probabilities and in the when you run the model is going to be optimizing the, the basically say it's a it's a if you know this Bayesian network is created with Bayesian networks and basically calculates um the optimal probability is the, the, the optimal probability for words to appear in particular topics given the distribution of these words in the in the in the documents. So you end up with similar things that we get in the LSA as well, but it's just how the the algorithm works is different. Again, you when you run this, uh, you can prepare the, your data in a similar way, you prepare the corpus a similar way, and um, you can clean it also like the in 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 a similar way just removing um like stop words removing punctuation doing limitization or like uh, getting from words to their root basically from stemming or or limitization and uh yeah and then of course choosing the number of topics you want to get from your data so this is what topic modeling is about in general there are different other algorithms that uh, that work in a different way. For example, the use of large uh, of language models, which here this one, like for example, you have Cape Bird, which uses the Bird a transformer model, and uh, here basically what it it does, it token uh, it's a, it uses the embedding. So if you understand transformers or language models, 
um, here you're using something extra, not just the distribution of words in your corpus. What you're using is the embedding, which is something that the language model learns through its pre-training. So this is like this is a model, the BERT model, the language model that is already trained on a lot of data already, like GBT two or three or four. All of these are language, big language models, transformer models that are trained on a lot of data, and basically they learn an um, what call them embedding. And embedding is uh, like uh, embedding text into a vector, like just a list of uh, numbers. And it, uh, in a, um, I'm just not going to go into this a lot because like uh, it's uh, there are a lot of technical stuff here. I don't know if you, like if you know already, you understand. I'm just going to try to try to explain in a simple um, ways. Is that uh, you embed each word or each like uh, you can also embed a sentence or a whole document into just one vector which is a numerical value so a list of num uh, of numbers such that it it's somehow encodes the meaning of the words uh, which uh, like how it does that it does that through it's uh, like when the language model is trained on a lot of data uh, a lot of text it kind of learns the meaning of the words or through its training and and like encode that meaning in the embedding. What, uh, what it means in the end that two words that are similar in meaning will have like if you ca calculate the cosine um, um, between uh, what's called a cosine similarity, which is like the dot product between two vectors that represent two similar words, you will have a high cosine similarity or a high dot product between words that are similar and words that are not are very not similar in, in meaning they will be um like uh, will have a small a small cosine similarity um or if you represent this on on like if you let's say if you think of the give you a better the sound of this okay sorry give me a a, a moment like i'm facing a problem my computer one second let me stop presenting and again just need to I apologize. Um,
Um, yeah, I apologize for, for this. Sorry. I um okay, just going back. Um So yes, so I was trying to explain what uh, like a word embedding is, but just like um, in a sense, if I, if you think about the vectors in just two dimension, um, like uh, say, um, like it's. Um, If I projected the, the vector, so the vectors in embedding are like um in the embedding they are usually like really really long big vectors. They are not um, they are not two dimensional. But say if just you project them onto the onto the uh, two dimension just for visualization, you can see that words that are um are related in meaning are uh, closer together than the is not actually a good example. Um, let me, just, uh, but yeah, it doesn't really, um, maybe, okay. But you just get that the idea is that the vector mean words uh, that have a similar meaning will be closer on the vector space than words that are not similar. So you can basically cluster them together. Um, uh, once you have the embedding, which is like, okay, you don't have the, uh, yeah. Anyway, so this is the idea of embedding. So you embed the word as a, as a vector and the vector somehow carries the meaning of the word such that words that are similar in meaning would be close together in the vector space. As vectors, they are similar, close together. Uh, if you see the uh, po uh, points projected on they will be close together and words that are uh, far from their meaning they'll be far away you can also embed a whole sentences or a whole document as well in the topic embedding in uh, keywords for example what is it does is that it um it finds um basically uh it embeds the whole document in your corpus. And then um, you have word embedding through the content. Okay. Uh, you have to choose like how like um, like how many, like up to how many words can be embedded together. So phrases like uh, let's say just let's talk about words just for simplicity. Each word is embedded separately, and then the whole document is embedded together. And then um uh we find the so sorry i'm i'm talking about okay i i i um so sorry if i like uh yeah i made a mistake actually so this is keyword in, uh, keyword extraction not not the topic modeling what i'm talking about here but um okay so there was a question actually about uh, keywords uh, keyword extraction so just like um for right so um let me stop here and just like um, if, if there is any question i jumped into into uh, like explaining something that i any questions so far I hope i didn't like confuse you so so badly yes alazar uh, so, uh, LAC in the idea for uh, topic modeling in the keyword is for uh, uh, keyword uh, as, uh, keyword extraction, right? Yes, yes. Um, yeah, that's like uh, these are two different. So, uh, like LSA, LSD are two uh, kinds of models. So it's not a library it's just a kind of model that can you can use for topic modeling 
uh, keyword is a particular library that you can use for keyword extraction. Um, yeah. Okay, so during LSA and uh, LDA, when we bring uh, when we extract the topics, uh, does that mean like uh, we can uh, extract each uh, we can extract topic for each uh, row, or does it mean that in general all rows can be represented by these ten topics? Do they act more as a cluster instead of a, a row based? Uh, information okay so this is like a um, basically part of your like the question you were asking on slack as well right so yeah so like when you do topic modeling and especially in the way that i was explaining in the la L, lsa or L, uh, lda um method you can basically because it doesn't depend on so what you are trying to do is yeah like you have like a corpus so not just one document you have to have multiple documents and basically you are trying to find underlying uh, topics that like give rise to all of to to, to this all of this um um all of these documents basically so you can think about it as, as a kind of clustering in a sense so you're trying to cluster your your um you're clustering that that top as underlying topics of of for each topic topics in in the general in the general meaning not in the specific meaning here so uh no you are not so you're not treating each for example let's say you let's say you're talking about the data we have in for this for this challenge we have multiple articles right so we have a data that you have titles and some content of articles right so if you want to do topic modeling for for your data you will have to pass all of your data all of the articles as the documents and then get the underlying topics um, and how they are represented by different ter terms that appear in these different articles uh, the keyword extraction is different keyword extraction is that you look at each you can look at each um, article separately and extract the words that are like the keywords in in the in the in the in the article so here you are not finding an underlying topic you're just like extracting a, like it's a word that appear or a phrase that appear in the article you are extracting it as the most relevant um words uh, does that make sense or does that answer the question actually uh, yes it does so well in general we'll be using the keywords to match the given topics right the issue I had was uh, correlating that given topic to the topic that I generate using LED modeling. Okay, so uh, you're asking about the particular question in task two, right? You have given uh, categories. Is that is that what you mean? Uh, yes, I, uh, yes, it is. But in, uh, my approach was instead of using the category coordinate, I was hoping of using either the topics that uh, are generating it using LDA or the keywords that have been extracted. Uh, my approach was using those two instead of using the category column. Okay, so uh, I'm sorry that this is going uh, away from the tutorial. Maybe can we can go back to this uh, oh, after okay. the end, yeah. right? Uh, just to go through um, because it's like a, it's a particular about the task in the challenge so um and have the discussion at the end let me just share my, my screen um yeah um okay so i hope the idea about uh, topic modeling was clear so um or a show show that the demo so sentiment analysis is another thing that is mentioned here and even like in the data in the challenge i think already has some sentiment um like uh, the result of sentiment analysis you don't actually need to run to do that but i mean you already have like 
um, description of your articles or your titles as neutral, positive, or negative. So, sentiment analysis is kind of uh, is is a kind of text classification. Basically, you are classif uh, classifying text as giving it like a, its sentiment can be positive, negative, or neutral. Uh, or you can have even more classifications if you want. Of course, you can say like this is. Um, if you want, you can include more, more, more classifications. If you know about classification, in generally, in machine learning classification um, is a supervised um, um, learning. So you need to have label data. You pass your label data to your model, and then after learning from the that in the training data, you pass, of course, the test. After your model is like trained, it can then classify new data for you in in different classes. So sentiment analysis is exactly that. It's just like um, text classification can have different kinds of uh, of um, of goals. Sentiment analysis is just one of them, and it's like similar to yeah. There is a complication that comes from that the fact that it's text, but it's still in the end, it is uh, a classification. Uh, task. Uh, so, um, is it has of course so many business uh, problems, uh, like and um, as, uh, sorry, it, it can be useful for so many business problems. So, we can basically um, handle a lot of stuff just by like measuring the the sentiment in the in the text. Again, as I said, like you can have multiple. Like in 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 our case, you can have in the simplest case, you can have positive or negative sentiment, but you can measure, um, like if you can add more classes if you want, and basically train your model for that, and you will be able to do like a more complicated sentiment analysis. Um. So, like um. Of, uh, of course, like uh, in, in the techniques can be different. Uh, so something that I'm not going to go through is like how large uh, large language model handles this. Basically, models like, uh, for example, like I think you can try in ChatGPT to ask it the sentiment of of a, of a text, and it will give you. Um, you can ask it like a classify it as positive or negative or just give me a sentiment it will give you some sentiment because it's trained on some uh, such for for such classification as part of its um, fine tuning basically so i'm not going to go through how that works but like in general in the end even like whatever model you use um like in the in the in the training for classification, you'll be using like uh, one one main method is like bias classification. This one is going to be finding the the maximum like uh, the class you assign a document to a particular class. So the the document is the C is the class. So the probability is that the the class appears given the document you want to maximize this probability and um so and of course this is like a, in in the bias rules you, you you get this from like uh, the probability of the uh of the document given the class and the probability of the class so okay so i'm just going to go through like uh, i don't know like having this the idea is that i'm trying to explain here is that um uh starting by from the training uh the training so in the training you will have um a particular classes appearing in in this particular probability given a particular like um right, when we're talking about text text we're talking about terms or words right so each word will be assigned a particular class in a sense and 
basically what is happening here is that like uh, when you turn the model this uh, this document has or this text let's just say a sentence have a particular is is positive let's say there's a model can assign like uh, yes this sentence which was positive has this particular words and so um basically and with like a whole data set it will calculate like um how many uh, probability that a word is positive or negative it will calculate it from the data and uh so assigning a probability for each word basically and then how many times the 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 class or the sentiment appears as well and basically maximize it so basically it will be um in in the naive way it will be calculating uh the maximum it will be giving the class such that it maximizes the probability uh given the like the probability of each sentiment for words in the data in the training data set okay and um I don't know. It's I don't know. If this is like very quickly. It's not easy to, to explain this very in a quick way or in a naive way. Uh, sorry, in a, without going to the what this. If you don't know uh, what uh, bias uh, um, priors and and like uh, how you update uh, the priors and how to what is like uh, the conditional probability and all of this stuff so it might be very confusing to you so if you don't know about this just ignore all this what i'm trying to explain here but it's just like help like keep in mind even if you cannot follow what i'm saying right now um just keep in mind that you need uh, especially if you want to go into a machine learning engineering um, um, track or you, you want to go for these kind of positions, you need to really have a good understanding of how the underlying machine learning models work, how they work. So uh, while maybe for some of you, this is like you understand all of this, this is like maybe simple enough for you to, to, to understand. For some of you who don't to get this, um just know that you 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 really need to under to have some basic understanding of all of this stuff um yeah <sighs> okay just um another way another thing for like um in sentiment analysis is deep learning again this is what uh like uh, what I started to explain earlier, the word embedding, like uh, the word words are embedded as vectors in high dimensional space. And the similarity between words is a uh, translate to closeness in the vector space. Um, you can use a large neural network model for sentiment analysis and, um, or a convolutional neural network for, for sentiment analysis as well um okay so skipping this because like we don't have time uh actually we are um so skipping the demo for for now uh so time series analysis is a, is a third topic that was mentioned here so time series uh um a time series is a collection of data points that like over a period of time so um and uh, the analysis analysis of such data um like if you think about uh for example the a time series data for example is for uh, the the prices of uh, stocks every day so for each stock uh, in the stock market you get like um opening uh, price and closing price for each stock every day. If you record this data, you'll have a time series. So because for each day you will have a value. So it's data collected over points in time. They are usually like uh, either like each day, it can be each month, it doesn't matter. You just have like they, they change with, with time, with a fixed, uh, a fixed uh, period of time. Uh, rainfall measurement and another kind of time series um temperature reading any kind of weather stuff uh, sales forecasting these are also um sales 
is time series data because it, you record it with like um, over a fixed period of time. Uh, forecasting is one uh, like one goal of uh, time series analysis. You try to forecast, for example, the stock market, um, stock prices, or like sales, or even temperature, rainfall. All of this you can forecast based on historical data. This falls into time series analysis, and um, like you can understand things like uh, trend is um, okay. Just uh, these phrases, terminology, trend, seasonality, this like uh, recording, um, time series analysis. Seasonality is a pattern that repeat over um, after a period of time. Like think about like seasons, like each year, for example, if there is a pattern um, in weather, for example, you can have like repeating pattern for over a year, right? So summers are similar in weather over the years. Uh, but there are also trends um, over time, like uh, which is changing, not, not something that is not repeating, but changing. Uh, for example, like global warming, temperature is rising. Even comparing summers to summers, you still have rising temperature. Okay. Um, and these are different types of types of uh, analysis that it can be done. There are classification. Um, um, like I said, forecasting, um, segmentation. Um, okay, these are all, diff all different types of the time series analysis. And time series analysis can be done with statistical models, with machine learning models, like um, like uh, simple machine learning models, like, like linear regression, random forest and stuff. We have deep learning, RNN, recurrent neural networks, or LSTM. Uh, this are particularly developed for time series data, but time series data are also like it's not included here. But large, uh, large um, transformer models or language models, surprisingly, not surprising, but I mean, uh, just from the, the name, it's not clear that it's good for for time series model. But actually, large language models or like the structure of a large language model, the transformer model, is very good also for time series because if you think about it. Language is a series of of words. Like when you talk, you are just uh, saying word after word. So it's a series, and it matters the order of them. Um, time series data can be treated in a similar way. So basically, a transformer models, the ones that are the underlying structure of a large language models, is uh, also suitable for uh, time series analysis. Okay. Let me stop here. Um, I, I hope that, like, because these are many more topics. I'm trying also in one hour is really not enough. Uh, so if you have any questions, otherwise we can go back to another question. Uh, any question about what we talked about here? Topic modeling, time series analysis, or sentiment analysis. Yes, Alaza. During the time series analysis, uh, we always need a time that uh, column, right? Without it, we can't uh, do a time series. Uh, actually, no, you don't need the time itself. What you need is that you just need that your data is, is um, uh, <clears throat> Uh, you need that your data is recorded uh, over a fixed period of time. So it can be like each day or each month or each week. But what is the time exactly shouldn't really, it doesn't really matter in the analysis. What matters is that the historical data you have and, um, and the fact that the period of time is, is fixed, that's all. Yes, in general, you are usually like um, you have a time column and you're measuring your data for a particular time. But in the analysis itself, it doesn't come into, into place the time 
in particular with matters is that these are sequential data. That's why like I, you can also have, um, this final thing I said about uh, comparing it to language is, is um, makes sense because like, it doesn't matter that you said this word in particular time, but matters that it's a sequence that which for which the order matters. Does that make sense to you? Uh, okay. Uh, yes, it does. And uh, in addition, is there an issue if the time frame is not fixed? Will the time analysis or the graph uh, will this not be built? Sorry. Say again. I can hear you very well. Oh, uh, can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Would there be an issue if there's a if the time frame is not fixed? For example. Uh, the difference between the data, the, the difference between the date between uh, the row one and row two be uh, be two days, and uh, row two and row three be five days. Will there be an issue? And if there's an issue, how can you fix it? Yes. So it is an issue if you want to consider it as a time series data. Um, I think uh, if the like um, if 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 you are missing. You can treat it as a missing data. Say I am recording the values each day, but then I missed a, a couple of days, and I have a data that like have like um, after five days, as you said. And if it happens like a, a one or few times in the whole data set, that's fine. You can treat this four days as missing data and you can try to impute it in a similar way. You can handle it as, a, as you handle missing data. Uh, normally, by filling it, for example, by um, there is a for time series data, you can fill data with the previous value or the next next value or the average between them or any other kind of linear uh, relationship. You can get a relationship between that, like moving average or something. So, yeah. So in a time series data, so if the data in general is structured such a way that um, the, the time difference between a data point and another data point is is variable. That this is not going to be a, a time series data or um, what we generally call a time series data. Let me just check. It, it in its analysis, it's going to be different. It's not going to be using the same kind of of analysis. Um, yeah. Okay. Thank you. All right. Uh, any other question? Okay, uh, if there are no other questions, we can return back to the question from earlier. Alazar, can you? Um, do you want to go through? Can you say the question from before again? Okay. Uh, the question was, uh, I think it was on more, uh, more on the topic modeling, right? Right. Yeah. You were asking basically okay. about, about the, the challenge, I think. Yes. So basically, uh, to categorize our uh, our uh, rating uh, data, meaning each article, to a, a known set of categories. I think that's given on the document. Right. Uh, uh, how would our approach be? Would it be more using more on using the topic modeling or uh, checking the similarities between the keywords in uh, any particular column? And, uh, other than that, for example, if some if an article uh, how do we know if an article belongs to a specific category do we have to define our own uh, attributes for that uh, category in order to be uh, included or in order for the article to be included in that category okay so um okay i think um all right so i think i understand the question so in task two, you have this 
like uh, I think this is what we mean by the the categories, right? We have this classification of headlines into the following tags: breaking news, politics, uh, to the end, right? Yes. And then in the task itself, it's as asking you to do multiple things. One of them is keyword extraction. So um, I know that I didn't I didn't actually go through how to do a keyword extraction, but basically there are multiple um, models. You can look at a particular title or a particular article and use any of these tools, which use like underlying models are different but um one of them is just a statistical and uh, keybert is using the like uh, model uh, embedding from uh, like um, a language model to to measure similarities and stuff uh, but basically you can extract the keywords from each article uh, separately so keywords in a headline or title so you can pass a title to the to each of these one of these libraries and extract the keywords so you will end up by with like a, of course you can define how many keywords you want to extract from each title and you will end up with a few keywords for each article in your in your data set right you uh then you can basically um um here say here say like it's like how similar are keywords in headline title compared to keywords in the news body across sites. So here first you get in the keywords and that you are you are you are comparing them. The keywords you get you compare them across uh, different web um, news sites. So after getting the keywords from each article and headline, basically you can compare if you get shared keywords between different uh, websites. For example, you can just plot the, the most common keywords if you get from a particular website and then, and then like, compare it to other like distribution from other websites, okay? This is the first part. Yeah. It doesn't have the topic modeling, it's keyword extraction. The second thing is topic modeling. And uh, basically you want to categorize the title content into uh, a set so this is i think the part that is confusing a non-set of topic categories and uh, you are interpreting this as that it means this list is that correct yes okay so i don't think that's what it means i think we just can can run any kind of topic modeling if i live as lsa or lda um topic modeling on your whole data as a corpus as and get uh, like um, um just like um, choose like maybe number of of topics like uh, say 10 or or whatever number you think is appropriate for your whole data maybe i don't know if you're going to be able to run the whole data as well uh, as a corpus might, might take um you can try and see how much uh time it will take um and then basically once you get the topics you will get like you can uh you can basically um again compare um like uh or, or like uh, the contributions for each topic or like uh, how each topic is represented by each um articles and then then uh, collect this by website so you don't have to worry about this uh, list of topics here it's like um you might be basically when you do the topic modeling you might be getting similar kind of topics you are not going to be getting levels actually for your topics when you do the topic modeling but if you look at through the, the representation probably you can understand what kind of topic is this uh, but it, basically, um, I don't think you need to worry about this non-set, like into a set of topic categories. Mm -hmm. Just ignore this non-word. Okay, uh, my question here is, uh, uh, let's say we've divided it into 10 topics, like you said. Uh -huh. uh, will, our, uh, will the aim after that be clustering that? or uh, describing how each of the articles 
belong to a specific uh, topic? Uh, so you will get uh, when you do the comic modeling, you can you will get the weight of each topic in the do in in the document, right? So you can basically get what which one comp uh, contributes the most to your article, or like uh, which like number like uh, let's two or three contributes the most in your to your article, basically. And you can pull uh, you can uh, group basically articles by website and see how they um as suggested here like you can plot um the topic uh what it says like uh, by date actually here like i'm asking you to do this by date and topics appearing and um Like uh, yeah, how many top uh, topics? How they appear in particular dates? So you basically you need to look at like uh, which uh, topic contributes the most to the article and and um, and look at the distribution of that. Basically, I don't know if it makes sense. Does it make sense to you? Uh, it kind of does, but uh, a little issue I've been running is that uh, after generating ten topics. Uh, there's a lot of similar words between uh, the topics and uh, will that be an issue meaning uh, for example one topic talks about stock news share stock and uh, the difference between that topic and another topic is basically one word which is below in the report but that be an issue when uh, classifying uh, when categorizing the articles uh, to uh, when categorizing the articles uh yes so uh, that's uh, that yeah that's that's um okay so there are because you did just like um, the modeling as is there are ways to improve the topic modeling and you can look through the 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 references to see that uh basically yes so to remove like uh, to make them more um uh, first, like maybe the number of topics is not optimal because uh, you cannot choose that. And also there are other ways to improve um, the topic modeling that, okay, I, I, um, I hope maybe like in some of these uh, references there are, um, okay, maybe 20 seconds, so. Um, um okay second it's time to see if there are Okay, so you can look probably, I don't know if this is sharing it. I thought I was, um, I was sharing my, uh, I don't know if this is shared in the, I can look through this and it has like a, a few suggestions of how to, to improve the topic modeling at the end of the article. Mm -hmm. So, um, so you can try basically to to apply like um, a couple of of these ways how to improve this topic modeling. Um, let's see. Uh, what else is in this challenge? Yeah. So I don't know. Um, okay. Does this answer a question in a sense, sir, Alza? Uh, I'll check the resource and uh, uh, if I have any extra question be, uh, relating to that, so I'll ask on the Slack. Uh, one last question for the last uh, for the last task, meaning modeling the events. What exactly is an event? Is it a topic or 
basically as a cluster or uh, it's not that much clear in addition it's the most challenging part and i don't even understand uh, what exactly is modeling the events mm -hmm. So the event here is, um, it means more in the news sense. When the event happens, uh, let's say a coup happens in, um, in Sudan, for example, uh, news articles were, art, art, uh, were write about it. And that's what it means by event in this, uh, in this, um, in this part, this is what they mean by event. So these events in news articles are written about and uh, basically want to see, like uh, you want to want to see like uh, how many events are covered in the data and which news sites report the event earliest and which which get kind of uh, highest reporting. Uh, I think. Uh, um, so basically, you're not going to be treating a particular event, uh, like, let's say I, I said, like, for example, a coup in Sudan, but it could be like any coup anywhere. Uh, this is like a kind of event and basically compare that. So how you go about doing it, there was a, they were given a couple of um, uh, examples, like uh, to follow in their way, you have to just like, read and see how they do, did this, basically. But as you said, as it's mentioned, in, this is the most challenging part. Um, in the analysis, uh, it's like, uh, I think they do some kind of um, a training the uh, a model and then to, to recognize this, uh, um the events uh, okay so i i really cannot really go into details at the moment but maybe if you have once you go through this if you have any questions you can ask us that um okay, thank you. okay so we are really uh over the time with uh, a lot so if you if you have any other questions you can ask you can tag me on slack and ask and uh, yeah, I hope this uh, session was uh, useful for you. Uh, yeah, by the way, just before I will end the recording, but um, 